Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we are taking a look at Suku and this video is jam packed. We have a ton of items to go through. So my last Suku video featured the first part of Suku anniversary collection. So those were a few items I had received in PR but I had purchased the rest of the collection. For some reason it just, it took a while to come. So I finally have the rest of the anniversary collection as well as the new loose powder. We've got a, a, a comparison or so, but we're not gonna focus too much on the anniversary. We'll do swatches. We've got some looks, eye demos and so forth. But most of that is kind of sold out. You know, there's not a lot left to find. So we'll go through that. But our main focus is going to be the winter collection. And I received a few items in PR. I did put up a sh short with those swatches but I purchased everything else. And so that finally arrived. Again, it took a little longer than expected. You know, it shipped right away and then it just kind of got stuck. So I finally got that. We're gonna swatch that. We've got some comparisons and stuff for that. And this winter collection, this is gonna be launching, it's already launched at Selfridges, but it will be launching at Cult Beauty, Liberty London, Harrods, and so forth at uh on thursday on the 19th so what that means for us here in the u.s that is typically going to be wednesday night going into thursday sometimes the middle of the morning on thursday like 3 a.m eastern time so you never really know exactly when but i always start looking wednesday night so i definitely want to be sure to get this up for those of you who are interested in looking at this collection because it is stunning and I think the photos online just do not do this justice. It is the glitteriest, most sparkly collection I've seen from Suku. And you know, it actually makes me think a lot of holiday, but this is not their holiday collection. They do have a couple sets coming out for holiday and we'll look at those when they launch next month. But I mean, this is the epitome of holiday, warm, cozy nights and afternoons. You know, it just brings to mind all things like coziness, warmth, sparkle, fun. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off with Anniversary. And Anniversary is already launched everywhere. There are some pieces still available, such as these eye and cheek palettes. You can see that for the Anniversary collection, it's our 20th anniversary. We do have special packaging here. It's kind of this champagne gold and very smooth. What I like about it is it is not really a fingerprint magnet. So that is definitely a plus. And we have these special eye and cheek palettes. So this one here is palette 101. And you can see that we have kind of an eye quad here, very sparkly kind of, it's more of a, a soft peachy melon shade. And then this second shade here is actually a cream. Now this is not exactly the same formula as the cream in the Tone Touch Eyes that we'll look at in the winter collection. This formula is creamier, a little bit softer, whereas the other one has a little tackiness, more like a, a primer. So this can be used as a primer, it can also be used as a cream blush, you'll see that in the demo, uh, but it can also be used on the eyes. And there will be a little bit of creasing unless you set it with some powder. Then our third shade here is kind of a matte burnt pumpkin. And then we have a nice sparkly orange here. And this is just such a great fall palette in my opinion. Next up we have this cheek shade, this blush shade. This formula for the blush is kind of a mix of the um, pure color and the melting powder blushes that have been discontinued. So you can see we have this really beautiful warm kind of orange palette here. And I think it's just a really beautiful color story. And then this is 102. So I do have eye swatches and demos of 102 in a separate video. I will leave that linked down below so that you can check that out if you're interested. Again, this palette is still available and we have the same types of formulas. We start off with a sparkly. These are gonna be warm. This is kind of like a warm, golden rose and then we have oops start swatching that one again we have a cream it's kind of again kind of like a warm orangey rose there as well then we have a cooler tone matte it's almost like a like a raspberry uh with a little bit more purple in there so it's a cooler tone kind of like tea rose raspberry and then we have a warm tone pink shimmer 
So you can see that the coolest tone here is going to be our matte shade. The others are technically going to be warmer in tone. And then we have this really pretty dusty rose blush shade. And I think this is a really pretty shade here. So this one I received in PR. So I do have this one in a separate video from when I received that. So these are going to be the two palettes. And before we move on, I do want to compare. This was a request here. This is the Viseart Florette Core Palette and uh, Core Palette. And we're going to go ahead and swatch this kind of in the middle just to see how it compares. So it goes like this. You can see we have four eyeshades and two cheek shades here. So, and these are all kind of like movable as well. So we're going to go ahead and kind of get those in there. You can see we have more of a matte peach. This next shade here is a shimmer. It's like peach, but there is a bit of a pink reflect in there. And then we have kind of this matte lilac shade. Very soft. Running out of space here. So we're going to swatch this one vertically here. We have a soft lilac shimmer. Love that shade. And then we have two cheek shades here. So we have this brown which, sorry, I picked up too much product there. It's like a peachy brown. There is a little shimmer in there, but it is a matte shade with a little bit of glitter. And then our second shade here is going to be a brighter peach. So you can see overall, this is gonna be more of a soft peach vibe versus more of an orange for the 101 and more pink for the 102. So we're gonna swatch the rest of the anniversary collection. Then we'll look at the demos and talk about all of these products. Another thing that they came out with for anniversary was a lip kit. And this actually had four different lip products, all different formulas, all different shades. And they actually, you know, were supposed to represent the different seasons. So our first shade here is one of the lip glosses in 104. And you can see that we have kind of this light, soft lavender shade. Let me just put another swatch there. It's gonna be sheer. And this is kind of more of your spring type of color. You got something very light and soft. At least I think of it as spring. And then I'm not exactly 100% sure which ones they pick for which season, but this would be my interpretation. 111, this is in the Lip Bog, which is one of my favorite formulas. They haven't been making too many of these. This would be the summer. This is number 111. What I love about the Lip Fog is, first of all, the wand here. I mean, look at this. It really puts the product on beautifully. It's got enough flex there. It's fine enough that you can get into different spots. This is gonna be a nice peachy pink shade here. And the Lip Fogs, these are going to be a matte, a, a liquid matte but they're very, very comfortable. You get kind of that sheer velvet kind of appearance with them. I just think that they are fantastic. So I love that formula. Next up for fall, we have a, this is gonna be one of the, I believe it's a, yep, sheer matte in 115. And you can see this can be built up to a deeper shade. And this is gonna be more of a terracotta orange. So definitely very fall reminiscent. It goes beautifully with the 101 palette. And then we have the Moisture Rich Lipstick, which is my favorite bullet formula from Suku. This one is in shade 129. And look at that. So pretty. So this is gonna be more of a rose shade. And again, I'm not sure which seasons they put these with, but to me, this rosiness makes me think of, you know, when you go outside and it's cold and you get a little bit of a rosy cheek, rosy lips from being chapped and so forth. So uh, this is a really pretty kind of rosy shade with a touch of berry in there. So this is in the lip kit. You cannot purchase those individually. They come all together and I think is a great set. Next, we have three face compacts. They're calling these the face compacts. These are pressed powders. We have 101 here in the light yellow. It's kind of like a buttery yellow. Then we have 102 in the pink and a lavender in 103. 
and it sold out like immediately. Now, at first glance, it might look like the designs here are the same, but they are actually slightly different. And I think that's something really cool. So each of the three has a slightly different like geometric pattern. Honestly, they make me think of snowflakes. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at these. These pressed powders, I really like the pressed powders. Unfortunately, they are, you know, limited edition. You can see this is gonna be a very pale, soft yellow. This is gonna be great for most people as an all over setting powder. You could also use it as a finishing powder to get a little bit of a blur. There, it's gonna be a matte finish, but there is a touch of luminosity, like a satin matte. There's no shimmer or glitter in there though. And it's gonna be a really beautiful option. Pink number 102, this is a really great brightening shade. And you can see that it is gonna be a warmer tone pink. So it will work for people with cooler tone skin as well as those who are warmer, unless you are overly warm. Uh, if you are close to the neutral spectrum though, it will work either way. This one's really great for brightening and you know, it can work under the eyes beautifully. They recommend it like on the cheeks for some brightening and so forth as well. And then 103, this is gonna be your cooler tone lavender shade. This works great for people who do have cooler skin tones, but for other people they recommend it underneath the eyes for a little color correcting and little brightening, but you can see it does have a little bit of a whitening effect to that as well. So it's gonna be a very pale, cool lavender with a touch of blue in there. And I think it's gorgeous. Now, before we move on, I just wanna compare that real quickly to the loose powder. This launched at the same time and it does come with a big puff. You can see it's a large container. We do have a mesh thing here. And in the photos, it looked like it was going to be a lavender powder, but it's actually a very soft pink. But you can see it's not gonna be as pink as the 102. Here's the 102 here. This is more white with a little bit of rosiness to it. And again, this one is going to have a little bit of a satin luminosity to it, but it's more matte. So I think there's a little bit, lum little bit more luminosity with the pressed powders. So let's move on to all of the demos for the anniversary collection. We'll talk about these products. The anniversary collection is called Spectrum of Beauty, and this is celebrating Suku's 20th anniversary. And I have to say, it, they really did a great job. They came out with something a little bit new and different. They celebrated some of their best formulas, some classic shades and so forth. So these did launch in September at all of their retail locations, but you can still find some of these pieces around, such as some of the face compacts. The 103 unfortunately sold out pretty much immediately. I haven't really seen that restocked, but we, you can find the eye and blush or eye and cheek compact still. The lip kit is also something that's sold out right away. So at different retailers, you can find different pieces. So I did want to share this. Now the eye and cheek compacts or eye and blush compacts, these, you know, I, as I mentioned, you've got the four eyeshadow quads. You've also got that sheer blush, the powder blush, but you can also use that cream shade as a cream blush. And I did, I am showing you that in the demo for 101 for our look with 101. So you can see that as well. And I topped it with the powder blush. It works very well that way. On its own as a cream blush, I do think it fades a bit by the end of the day. So I wouldn't wear it on its own, but setting it with powder or putting powder underneath and then topping the cream blush gives you a really nice luminosity there. So, the whole purpose of these compacts was to give you five different shades that you can use in different ways. So they're, according to Suku, they want to project color, light, and shadow around the eyes and the cheeks as desired. So the four eye shades, we have a high pearl formula capturing light for a metallic shine, followed by a clear cream formula, which adheres well and adds a fresh luster, a lightweight matte formula with trans with translucent with a hint of shadow and a polarized pearl shimmer that produces a vivid color with dimension and depth. With the four eye shades is a sheer blush with subtle color that can also be used around the eyes. So number 101 is described as an orange palette that offers a healthy and modern look with chic tones and exquisite shades. I think this is really well suited for fall, that's what it makes me think of, and warm skin tones. I think it's really beautiful. 
And both of these palettes are ones that can be used on light or deeper skin tones because they are very buildable and you have colors that can really be emphasized or sheared out. 102 is a pink palette that adds color and charm from a soft and gentle wash of color or built up as desired. So overall, I think they did a really nice job with that. However, both of these palettes are fairly warm. So if you have very cool undertones, they may not, they might not be the best option for you. Now, as for the palettes themselves, we do have a one year shelf life. They are made in Japan, like all Suku items. And in this case, they are going to have 9.2 grams of product. We do have a mirror inside and there are no applicators included with this palette. I personally like that because you're keeping it nice and compact, very easy to throw in your bag. Now, moving on to the face compacts and these are gonna be the pressed powders and According to Suku, they represent the spectrum of reflection in an abstract three-dimensional pattern to give a beautiful glow. It's Suku's new proprietary 3D printer with decorative technology is used for the first time in the creation of the face compact. The 3D pattern depicts the spreading trajectory of light for a powder that gives skin radiance, eliminates dullness, and naturally improves skin tone. It can be used as a face powder to finish base makeup or as a highlighter on the cheeks, forehead, and bridge of the nose and under the eyes. Personally, I don't find these quite luminous enough for a true highlighter, but if you want an incredibly subtle highlight, you could definitely use these in whichever shade would work best for your skin tone. You know, uh, I personally though think these are best as a finishing powder or even a setting powder if you're not going to add an additional finishing powder. So we have the three shades, 101 is a bright and natural glow formulated primarily with gold tone pearls for a lively impression. So that's our buttery yellow. It's a very soft, pale yellow gold, really beautiful. Again, these are gonna be more of a, more of a soft matte with a touch of satin, not a true satin matte in the terms of what you would term a satin matte eyeshadow, but there is a little luminosity here. 102 gives a soft and dewy complexion formulated primarily with pink pearls for creating a soft look. This gives a really nice rosy complexion, kind of warms up the skin a little bit, gives you kind of that fresh from the outdoors kind of appearance if you use that all over the skin. And 103 gives a translucent glow formulated primarily with white pearls. And again, those white pearls are actually gonna be kind of a soft lavender look. You have a little bit of lavender and a little bit of blue in there. So that's going to suit people with cooler skin tones primarily. The powders also have a one year shelf life. They're made in Japan and we have 9.6 grams of product. And again, we do have a full size mirror in there with no applicators, really beautiful product. Moving on to the lip kit, this sold out pretty much immediately, so we're not gonna focus on this, but here they are going through the colors that they chose for the seasons, and I did not get them correct. So for spring, they chose the Lip Fog in 111, and it says this delivers a soft misty gloss with a soft texture and gentle cherry plum color. For me, it's more of a, um, I would say a peachy pink, pe peachy rose kind of shade. That's the one that I had chosen for summer. For summer, they're going with the lip gloss in 104, a lip color that brings a healthy gloss in a striking hydrangea color with a clear sparkle. And this is gonna be the lavender one with sparkles, kind of a pinky lavender, really beautiful shade, but that's what I had chosen for spring. So they kind of reverse those. For autumn, they chose the sheer matte lipstick in 115, which is what I did as well. It's described as a rich and mellow hue inspired by the beautiful autumnal scene and foliage. And for winter, the moisture rich lipstick in 129, a lip color that gives a dewy finish in a deep shimmering red. And yes, I could describe it as a soft red. To me, it's more of a deep tea rose. And I think it is a really beautiful shade. It's uh, honestly, I love this whole lip kit. I wish they sold these shades individually. Um, you know, my favorite would probably be this lip gloss here, followed by the moisture rich lipstick, then the lip fog, and then the sheer matte lipstick. 
Let's move on to the loose powder demos here as well. And this is a new permanent product. It launched at the same time as the anniversary collection, but it is not part of that collection. It launches the same time as the new foundation. And I have already discussed that in the video because I received that one with PR. So that's with the first part of anniversary. So you can check that out. It is the base that I am wearing in today's video as well. And that I wear shade 205, which is a brand new shade from Suku. Now the loose powder is gorgeous. It is in this huge container. It's, it has 20 grams of product. We have a one year shelf life. It's made in Japan and it's a really pretty, you know, sheer powder with just a touch of a rosiness to it. So according to Suku here, this loose powder has finally arrived featuring a translucent smooth and light veil like a fine feathery cloak it has smoothness and lightness for the ultimate finishing touch the loose powder is formulated with high levels of amino acid based powder to deliver a smooth and soft finish without drying out the skin the particles are less angular than sheet type powder and have a smoother feel on the skin i'm not sure if that's a typo or if sheet type powder is referring to press powders. Uh, so I'm not quite positive on that part, but it also says it effortlessly blends with the skin and has great adhesion without leaving a powdery feel. And I would agree with that. It definitely attaches to your skin very easily. You need just the smallest amount of product whatsoever. You don't feel any powder on your skin, but you are left with kind of this matte veil on your skin with just a touch of luminosity. It's definitely more matte than the pressed powders though in the face compacts. Now, also according to Suku, it says a fine feathery powder enhances the luster of the foundation and adapts to the skin over time. It enhances the skin's natural beauty and the look of the foundation by minimizing the appearance of pores and fine lines resulting in a silky and radiant complexion. The powder beautifully blends with the foundation and skin's natural oils over time for an always polished look. And I would agree, it definitely wears well. I have not had, I've been wearing it for weeks now and no issues with it accumulating in lines over the day or looking kind of, you know how sometimes like loose powders, they, as your skin gets oilier, you know, they can kind of build up and you can see like that residue. I don't get that with this powder. Actually, my face ends up looking very fresh with this throughout the day. According to Suku, the misty pink hue resembling a gentle morning mist has a natural toning effect on the skin. The misty pink hue with a bluish undertone resembles the translucent quality of dawn's light. The fine pearlescent pigments add a natural and glamorous brightness to the skin without affecting the rest of your makeup look. And you know, that, that seems pretty clear. Now, when you're looking at this powder up close and you're looking at the swatch of it, it definitely looks white with just a touch of rosiness. So it is going to be a little bit more white than the 103 Compact from the actual uh, anniversary collection. Let's look at just a couple more swatches. This is the Oil Rich Glow Powder from Suku last year in 101, and this came in a lavender shade. And let me just go ahead and swatch this right below it so we can kind of see that. I love this shade. You can see that this is not gonna be quite as white. It's a little bit harder to get a swatch on this one, but it is gonna be a little bit more lavender. Now, size reference, this is going to be 15 grams. This was their standard size before versus the new 20 grams. You can see that our lid here, it has a little bit of a curvature to match the new foundation. And it's very decorative. Like I think this looks stunning to just like kind of sit out on your vanity. Now, another loose powder from Suku. This is, this had actually 14 grams of product. And this was the Smooth Matte Loose Powder that came out not too long ago. And this is going to be a light pink shade. And you can see in tone, those are gonna be pretty similar. Let me swatch a new one right next to it. So here is the Sheer Matte, and here is the new Loose Powder. You can see the new Loose Powder is a little bit more white. It also has a little bit more bluishness to it. So it's a little bit cooler in tone, whereas you see a little bit more rosiness with the pink sheer matte. 
So just a slight difference there. I think all of their powders are beautiful, but I have to say I do, I'm really partial to this new one for a more matte look and the oil rich glow powder, the lavender one for a little bit more luminosity. I think they are both fantastic powders, but this is definitely a really great go-to powder. And just one more, this is the Givenchy number no. one sparkling mousseline or, not the sparkling one, sorry. This is number one, Mousseline Pastel. I, I was just looking at the old holiday one before. We're gonna put this right next to the new Suku one. You can see that this one, which by the way has blue, green, purple, and pink mixed together. You can see overall this is gonna be cooler in tone, has more of a bluish cast than the new Suku powder. Formula wise, I think these are both fantastic. These are both probably my two favorite loose powders overall. So let's go ahead and move on to the winter collection. So I apologize, but my arm does have some remaining sparkles still left from the anniversary collection. It is impossible to get rid of sparkle from swatches until you actually shower and even then, Sometimes they don't all come out. So we're gonna start off by going through the winter collection. It is a pretty large collection. So let's start off with, um, let's start off with the eyeshadow quads here. And I did receive three of these items in PR. So this one here, 129, I received in PR. This is stunning. I love this. We start off with a sparkly white. Then we move on to another kind of sparkly. It's kind of like a, a nude champagne, but there's a touch of rose in there. Then we have this one here, which is going to be a little bit of a richer brown. Again, very sparkly. These are the sparkliest shadows from Suku I've ever seen. And then we have a matte brown shade, nice rich brown. And so this is the 129 palette. I think it is stunning. It makes a really beautiful look, you know, great for sparkly every day or uh, holiday. Then we have the 130 palette. So I purchased this one. And, you know, I think it is so much prettier in person than when you see it online. So we start off with kind of this golden champagne shade. You can see it's still kind of like a nude brown, but there's a touch of yellowish beige in there. And then we have a blue gray silver. It's kind of like a slate blue silver and a sparkling yellow. I mean, look at that. Now, let me just show you the gray layered with the yellow. You get kind of this really pretty kind of green that looks beautiful as a duochrome. I highly recommend that. And then we have another matte brown. You can see it. this one has a little bit more gray in it. It's a little bit cooler, whereas this is a little bit richer and warmer. Both palettes are stunning. They work together beautifully or on their own. In addition, we also have two of the cream tone touch eyes. So this is a relatively new product. These are a cream version of their single shadows and you can use these on their own or as a primer. This first shade here, 114, you can see it's kind of like this coppery, like a soft coppery shade, but there is some pink pearlescent in there. So there is some shimmer in here. So as I mentioned, again, the sparkliest collection from Suko. This one here, 115, is going to, it looks brown here, but it's actually gonna be more of a like a, a soft brownish burgundy with blue shimmer. Really, really pretty. So I think these shades are really gorgeous. From the Pomo photos, they actually looked a lot like the other two cream tone touch eyes that were released this summer, but they're very different. So we'll look at those. And then we have two blushes. So these are the pure color formula. So we've got a blush and a highlight and we're gonna put these here. So here is the pink blush. You can see it's kind of like a rich berry pink. And then we have a kind of a warm coppery kind of highlight with a touch of pink in there. And you can mix these together for a luminous blush. And let's just kind of buff that a little bit. 
and really pretty. These definitely can go on deep. You want to, if you have fairer skin, apply them a little bit more sparingly. I do think the highlight is a little bit deep for me and personally, I would have loved to see a cooler tone highlight with this pink one, but let's take a look at 145. This is a really beautiful, warm brown. You could even use this kind of as a bronzer if you really wanted to. And then the highlight for this one is gonna be a little bit more of a soft brown nude. I really like this highlight. And you know, for me, I have to go a little sparingly with it because it is a little bit deeper, but I think it's a really beautiful, natural looking shade. This is the mixed version if you want a luminous blush. And you can see it kind of gives you more warmth there. So overall, I would say if you use these mixed, they're both gonna be pretty warm, but this is gonna be a cool tone blush with a warm tone highlight, but warm tone blush with a cooler tone highlight. But overall, the result on these are going to be warm if you mix them. Then we have two new lip glosses. And I have to say, I really like these. This one here is 105. And you can see it's gonna be a really pretty soft pink shade. This, it has a touch of warmth in there. There's a touch of peach, but it is gonna be a really pretty, pretty neutral pink with some shimmer. And then 105 here is gonna be a bit warmer. And this is gonna have a little bit more brown and a touch of orange in there. And it's kind of like a very soft version of Burnt Pumpkin with some shimmer. And then we have two Vibrant Rich lipsticks. So we have shades 118 and 119. So 118 is a beautiful berry. And I received this one in PR along with this pink blush here, by the way, 144, and that first eyeshadow palette. So you can see this one definitely has some bluish tones. It's kind of like a fuchsia berry. And then we have 119, which is going to be more of a rich brown with some burgundy in there. This is what's on my lips topped with the 106 gloss. So I have this kind of um, blotted out. So it's very sheer with the 106 gloss. So let's take a look at the eye swatches, cheek swatches and demos and talk about these products. So the Suka Winter Collection has already launched at Selfridges, but it will launch everywhere else on Thursday, the 19th of October. So that will be for Herod's and Liberty. Not positive that Cult Beauty will get items. They get certain items. I believe they are going to be getting them at an even later date. So sometimes Cult Beauty is even more delayed. Um, but, you know, Herod's and Liberty definitely will be receiving the items on October 19th. And according to Suku, this collection expresses the bold yet delicate season of makeup with a collection imbued with shimmer, bringing a sense of splendor and exuberance. So let's start off with the eyeshadow palettes. And we have two of these. Again, we have 129 and 130. These are the signature color eyes formula. We have 6.2 grams of product in each. They do come with two applicators and we have a one year shelf life and these are made in Japan. I have to say these color stories are beautiful. At first, you know, I thought the 129 was gonna be my favorite and you know, it probably still is. I think it's a really beautiful um, kind of like neutral shimmer palette, but the 130 looks so much prettier in person. I think the photos online just don't do it justice. You can't see all the nuances of shade. And I love the amount of sparkle we're getting here. Now, as for the sparkle in the eyeshadows, you can definitely get some sparkle kind of mixed into some other shades from some like, you know, powder kick up and stuff like that, but it's not significant. And I have to say, I haven't really experienced fallout with these shades. Perhaps, you know, definitely you're gonna get a little bit. It's a glittery product. So yes, you will definitely get a little bit of straight glitter in places, but is it significant? Am I ending up with powder, like glitter dust on my cheeks afterwards? No, not really. This is not something that you have to worry about and put it on before your foundation to make sure you don't make a mess. So I have to say it grips pretty well. So I'm impressed with that. And if you want even more grip and you want to really kind of 
maximize those pigments, definitely layer the Tone Touch Eyes or a primer underneath, and that'll give you grip and a little bit more vibrancy. Now, according to Suku, these palettes, you know, uh, the 129, it says the combination of pink and brown creates a look full of warmth and glamour. The pearlescent pigments in the formula add a nice touch to the holiday season. Again, it's not technically their holiday collection though. They do have a holiday collection coming out with two eye sets that feature, uh, you know, a few new items and some really pretty palettes. So I can't wait to see those as well. The 130 is an irresistible jewel-like color designed for luminosity to accentuate the eyelid's three-dimensionality. And, you know, I just think that these are gorgeous. So the, the quality stands up to Suku standards. You know, we've got a more neutral palette. We have one that's a little bit more fun. And I think they play well together and on their own. You can layer the colors and get some different complexities. I really like the uh, slate gray in or slate blue, even in the 130 layered with the yellow to get this really pretty kind of olive green. And you still see a little bit of reflect when you shift to see a little bit of the blue and a little bit of yellow. So you're creating your own dupe duochrome there and if you use those wet you get a much more rich green more emerald like and i just think it is absolutely stunning i love that capability there and the fact that they layer so nicely together they're not like so opaque that you're obliterating another shade so i think that these palettes you know they really did a great job on those now the Tone Touch Eyes, again, this is a cream formula and I don't always love cream eyeshadows. I am not a huge fan of ones that crease very easily, except for in certain situations. These I think work well as a primer. They're a little tacky and I love that because I do end up reaching for the previous ones. I use that dark brown one actually as a base quite a bit. and. You know, I think that the formula on these is really great. So personally, I like the formula of these over the cream product in the anniversary palettes. So we have 114, which is described as having green and blue polarized pearls, blend it on a brownish pink base to give a color that creates depth. And I, I can see that. Honestly, though, I see more just like pink luminescence over the you know, peachy brown base, I don't really see blue and green in there. So I see more pink and it ends up looking more like a rose gold kind of shade. And then the 115 is described as being a reddish brown with sparkling red and yellow pearls used as a single color or layered with other eyeshadows for a deep eye look. And here for me, I see that reddish brown base, but I see blue or green pearls. So I don't know if perhaps they wrote that incorrectly, but I was also in a demo and they spoke that way too. So maybe it's my eyes, I'm not sure. But uh, I definitely see more of like a blue shimmer on top of the 115. And I have to say, I really like that one. So that is my choice between the two Tone Touch eyes. And again, I think the formula is great. These, you know, if you pile it up a lot and you're using it on its own, yes, you'll get some creasing. But if you kind of buff it out and blend it out on your eyelid, really the creasing is pretty minimal and it doesn't happen immediately. So I like that. But I really do prefer using these as a base. You know, powder pigments will adhere to them very well. And it's, I just think they make a really nice base. So I'm actually wearing the 115 as a base with today's eye look. Moving on to the blushes. So these are our pure color blushes. A lot of times we see these more as an ombre look, but we almost always have kind of this sheer blush heading towards a highlight. And in this case, we have kind of a 50-50. So we have one side with a blush and it's actually pretty pigmented, which is, you know, your pure color blushes typically are very sheer and light and you can build them up. These start off being more pigmented than many other pure color blushes. And then you have kind of a deep highlighting color. So it's very sparkly, beautiful sheen. And you can use these separately or you can blend them out. And I do think that the way that they did this kind of more as a half and half versus that ombre really is useful to kind of, because you know, those highlights are a little bit deep and a little bit warm for me. So I definitely want to use those more sparingly. 
And so I think that the way this was designed is really beneficial for that. So we have two different shades here. We have 144, which is a set of rose pink blush with a delicate fine satin like sheen and a rose gold highlighting color that gives a liquid like gloss. And I would agree with that. The rose gold I do think is more peachy. Um, it's kind of like, I, we've all seen some like really bright rose golds. That's what it's like. So definitely a, a more brighter rose gold there. And then 145 is a natural reddish brown combined with a dazzling beige gold highlighting color. And I would agree with that description as well. And you know, there is just a touch of orange in that reddish brown. So it's a little bit warm there. I think it's really beautiful though. And I do think the highlighter on there actually tends to have a little bit more of a cooler brown mixed in there. So really beautiful. I love the combinations that they have in here. And you could see in the demos that I kind of wore them in different ways so you can see how they apply separately and mix together as well. Now, as for the lip products, let's start with the treatment wrapping lips. These are, by the way, everything in this collection is limited edition. So these are two limited edition lip glosses with luxurious pearl sparkle. And one of the great things about these lip glosses is that they are very comfortable to use. They do have some lip care in them, so they really feel more like a melted lip balm on the lips. They're very comfortable, and I do find that if I wear them regularly, my lips stay in really great shape. So I really love the formula. The applicator for these are really easy to use as well. So we have 105, which is going to be kind of your soft pink with pink pearls, and 106, which is described as a shimmering gold color that melts into the skin, and you can use it alone or layer it over other colors. Now, to me, it's more of a coppery orange shade, and it actually brings to mind the 101 Anniversary palette. I think it goes very nicely with that as well. It does layer beautifully over other shades as well, which is how I'm wearing it today. Now the Vibrant Rich Lipstick, these are really intense colored lipsticks, you know, full intensity with one swipe. And so that's kind of what the Vibrant Rich Lipstick is. It's gonna be a cream formula. It's very comfortable to use and it does have a little bit of a soft matte finish. So this is kind of your richer matte finish versus the sheer mattes that we saw in the lip kit there. And they're, you know, again, strong pigment there. So 118 is going to be an eye-catching fuchsia pink with a prominent presence. And 119 is an edgy grown-up dark brown with a rich color you will want to choose in winter, a shade with a hint of redness and warmth. So overall, I have to say the entire collection is absolutely stunning. I love this whole collection. If I had to narrow down my favorites, honestly, I think it would be really, really hard to do. I love this whole thing. But let's go ahead and move on to a few comparisons real quickly. All right, so I wanted to take a look at the Tom Ford Metalist palette. We're gonna just kind of swatch this vertically right up here so we can kind of see how it goes with the um, 129 palette because it's kind of close. We do have a similar kind of luster, but this is gonna be more of a metallic sheen versus a sparkly sheen. You can see that we do kind of have some of those warmer browns in here like we do with the 129. So I think it is a good alternative. This is still one of my favorite palettes. I don't really have anything to compare with the 130. So I did wanna bring up though, the uh, Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette as well. And let's just take a look at a few of these shades. This is the shade Filigree. Let's just, we're gonna kind of swatch these kind of randomly here. This is a shimmer version of this matte brown in the 130. Let's see how the Silhouette, which is a matte brown, that's gonna be a little bit more black than that in the 130. And then, let's see here, this Sheen shade. See how this compares, we'll just go right here. And you can see it's a little bit more beige, but not as not as golden as the first shade in 130. So it's kind of in between those two. So that was just a few shades to kind of look at in the I Need a Nude palette. 
which is always a great option as well. You know, you're not gonna necessarily get dupes, but you can get some things that are similar. I do think that the sparkle though is actually more intense with these Suku shades. One last eye palette I want to look at is the YSL. This is in 100 and see, I'm gonna put this down here because I just don't have a lot of space. This definitely, you know, we've got a lot of sparkle in a couple of these shades here, like this first shade here. Again, the sparkle's gonna be a little different, but I do think that this first shade is kind of reminiscent of the kind of sparkle you get in Suku. I still think the Suku is a little bit more intense, but you can see that this color story kind of takes a similar shade to this. It's a little bit cooler in the YSL, um, but not quite as pink as those in the 129. But I would say that this is gonna be closest to the 129 palette. Let's take a look at the original Tone Touch Eyes and the cream formula. So this is the 112, which is kind of this beigey khaki shade. You can see it's gonna be warmer, it's more brown, and you know, it's gonna be pretty different. It doesn't have any sparkle. We also have this one here, 113, which is kind of a rich brown. And again, in the pan, it looked like those might be more similar, like these shades kind of look pretty similar in the promo photos. But you can see this is a rich coffee brown and these both do not have any shimmer, whereas the 114 and 115 do. And those are gonna be very different shades. Now, I just wanted to move on to some blushes. These are the Bobbi Brown Brightening Blushes. I really like these. This is Blushed Burgundy. So I wanted to kind of compare this one uh, you can see it's kind of in between these two blush shades here. And then this is kind of our furthest highlighting shade, which again is kind of in between the two of these, but I would say it's a little bit closer to this. It's a little bit more brown than the one in the 144, but it is probably closer, closer to that one. I also wanted to look at the blushed bronze shade here and let's put this one here you can see that this is going to be a lighter version more pink than the 145 and then here is our highlighter shade which again is going to be softer more peachy than this but it's kind of a nice light option compared to the 145. and then this is the armani luminous silk blush in 61. I wanted to see how this one compares to the blush shade in 144. You can see that those are pretty close. This is actually a little bit more red, it's a little warmer, versus the 144, which has just a little bit more fuchsia in it. It's a little bit cooler tone. So, but those are very close. And let's move on to some lip comparisons. So this is the lip gloss in 04. So I'm gonna put that one right up here. You can see it's gonna be more of a pumpkin shade. It's a little bit more pigmented. And then we have the 03 shade. I'll put this one right down below. And you can see this is gonna be a softer orangey shade with some more yellow. And you can see that the 106 is kind of in between, well, it's like a lighter version of this. It's got a little bit more peach and it has that pearl luster. Now, as for the 105, let's take a look at, this one here is number five, which is probably my most used shade out of these. And you can see that this is another really pretty pink. This one actually has a little bit more blue in it. The new 105 is a little bit warmer in tone. This one here is number one, which from the tube looks like it might be similar, but you can see it's actually gonna be a lot lighter. This is more sheer, and it's a little bit more of a sheer carnation pink. Think, you know, a very sheer version of the Crayola carnation pink crayon. So those are some lip gloss comparisons, but let's take a look at some lipstick comparisons. So this one here was a request. This is the Givenchy um, Intense Silk in 338. This came out for holiday last year. So you can see this one here is gonna be a little bit more red. Doesn't have quite as much purple in it, but it is going to have a similarity there. And then I also want to take a look at Guerlain's holiday from last year. This is number 777. Love this shade here. And this is also gonna be a matte shade. You can see that that's very similar to the Givenchy. This one does have a little bit more purple, but you can still see that the Suku has a little bit more blue in it than either of those.
And then this is going to be Rouge Dior Forever in 670 Rose Blues. Just wanted to go ahead and add this one here as well. You can see it's a little bit more mauve. It's like a dustier version of this, but we do have a similar amount of blue. This is just gonna have more rose in it as well. Now, as for the 119 shade, this is Guerlain Rouge G in number 19 that came out for the fall. You can see this one has a little bit more purple in it, but it's going to be a very similar deep brown. This is a little bit cooler in tone and it is gonna be a satin formula. And then we have the Armani Lip Power in 203. This is gonna be lighter, a little bit warmer. This is also gonna be a satin formula. You can see there's more red in this one. And then, oh, one other shade I wanted to compare with the 118. This is Suku 114 that came out in one of the recent collections here. And you can see that this one is gonna be more purple. It's more like the rose blues. So you can see, let me see if I can get a little bit of that right here. So you can see those right next to each other. So you can see this is definitely gonna be a little bit more purple and just more of a muted shade in general. I absolutely love it. I've been wearing that one a ton. Oh, and then this is Lisa Eldred's uh, Velvet Decade. So I wanted to compare this to the 119 as well. So let's put that here. And you can see here that it's gonna be a little bit deeper. You, It's gonna be a little bit cooler in tone, but you also get a bit of that reddish hue there as well. And then while we're at it, let's take a look at Skyscraper Rose from Lisa Eldridge. And let's see here, where can we put this? Let's squeeze this in here. You can see it's gonna be a more vibrant pink. And then, so that was Skyscraper Rose. Let's go ahead and try Rainbow Spill too. I think this is gonna be too warm. Yes, that is definitely gonna be too warm there. Now, I just wanna mention that I did purchase these items from the Suku counter at Selfridges. So when you purchase a certain amount, you do get a free gift. This was my free gift this time. And so it's a little little bag. And then inside, they sent me one of the Suku, it's a blending brush here. And these are synthetic. So this was the free gift that came with the winter collection. And the free gifts and stuff, these are from the counter specifically. So if you order online, you, you won't be getting those. But uh, I do th think online ordering is a little bit faster. So just something to note. Overall, I think both the anniversary collection, the new powder, the winter collection are fantastic. Personally, the winter collection though has really stolen my heart. I, it's one of my favorite collections this year. Uh, you know, another one that I think Suku really blew it out of the park with was this summer collection. This is kind of right up there. These are definitely two of my favorite makeup collections for the entire year from brands in general. So very excited for that. Can't wait to see the new sets for holiday as well. And I'll definitely keep you updated on those. If you aren't following me on Instagram, please do so. That's where I share a lot of the information in my stories. So not necessarily on posts on the feed, but in the stories. So definitely follow me there, check those out. That's why I put sales. And I've also been putting them on the YouTube community tab as well. So take a look at that. And I hope this was helpful. I'll have the information for ordering from the counter down below in the description box, as well as the link to the first video for part one of the anniversary collection. And uh, you know, I hope to see you again soon. Enjoy and have a great day. Thank you so much for watching.